What a massive day it was for ALGS fans across the globe. We got regional finals for APAC North, APAC South. We know who's going to land based upon those performances as well. We know who won the regional finals. Then big pro league days here for North America in the EMEA region. Big teams that needed a big day got the big day they were looking for. Was it all that they needed or do they still need more? Of course, we're here to dive in to discuss what's been happening in the last couple of days. And obviously, we've got more games to talk about today as well. So first off, APAC North started us off with the first team to complete their regional finals striders was in first overall with the match point finals but you also had many people behind them take a look at this 82 points in first but you had many people approaching that victory as well 105 points in second 101 points in third if you're new to the scene you're wondering why less points is actually won. once you hit you know the, the match point threshold it's then who wins the next game uh that's on match point so obviously all these people were on match point like literally the entire lobby almost 16 people were all on match point 13 games like this was such a long regional finals it went such the distance and striders got first hao in second interforce 36 in third fanatic with 100 points in fourth north Depth in fifth uh, impact in sixth no s fox in seventh reignite in eighth of course this was the old pulver x team then you've got GHS in 9th, Ty in 10th, uh, X-Factors in 11th, New J in 12th, Funny Loco in 13th, Crazy Raccoon, right? The former Reject Winity that made their roster change with Justina and so also departing ways with Karen P. So these guys did not have a great performance. Uh, Kinder Trip Gaming in 15th, Riddle Order in 16th. So after that took place, of course, now we know their official spot. So let's take a look at the APAC North region. Here are your teams going to land. Fnatic in 1st, New J in 2nd, No as in third, Fennel in fourth, GHS in fifth, HAO in sixth, Interforce 36 in seventh, North Deption in eighth, and Striders with that victory surpassed Crazy Raccoon to go to the ALGS split two playoffs. So big day out of those guys. I know they were so happy about that win. That win was everything for them in their qualification. And now Crazy Raccoon, what a big choke, especially after making the roster change. You're doing just fine. Then they make this roster change right before regional finals. It was just a weird one. I think a lot of people had question marks, and now they're going to be missing out on the land. What a crazy set of events for those guys. Then you go into the APAC South scene. Now, let's dive into what happened with this one, because I felt like this one was kind of surprising as well. Of course, you do have some of these teams that were still playing solid, right? MKers in first. No surprise. Those guys have been good all year long. M or all split long, really. MK, though, they did get first. They won the entire regional finals. VKG, second place, right? These guys also have... Have been doing good for so long so no surprise there bear claw in third heroes in fourth vegas inferno in top five we've seen all these guys honestly have their good moments this split so i'm not surprising any of these teams up here it's more about the teams that i didn't see up here so let's dive into that guild in 10th place kind of surprising i thought mt being on this roster maybe they would fare off a little bit better now he did do solid but you know still he was that you know i guess it's not really all about the damage and all about the kills whatever but he was at the bottom for whatever it's worth then you've also got dreamfire in 12th you've got legends gaming in 15th now it doesn't matter those guys are going to land anyways uh and as a very solid uh team strafing flame somehow did not pick up a single kill the entire event i don't know how but this game only lasted seven games so very different from our apac north uh, you know, the other side of this. Geek Esports also thought they would have probably fared off a little bit better. But overall, it doesn't seem like it was too surprising for the top five teams. But I just think the teams that did not show up were a little surprising. So let's take a look at the APAC South teams that are qualified for LAN. You've got Legends Gaming. You've got MKRs, VKG, XNY, SWQ. Guild did still make it. Dreamfire in seventh. But Bear Claw, despite that good performance, was still one point away from tying with number seven and don't forget things are different now apex south lost one of their spots so they did have a normally it would be bear claw going in still but because of their lack of performance at the last land they lost a spot to apac north so apac north now got nine instead of eight and apac south now has seven instead of eight so bear claw sadly missing out on that and that's going to be a big gut puncher to them at the end of the day also wanted to make mention of some games that took place inside of the emea region last night or actually yesterday morning if you're from the north american scene but trojan got first these are big games for them eternal in second navi in third and alliance in fourth godex in fifth XO in six, Apex Warlords in seventh, DMS in eighth, Free Agent Kids in ninth, NIP in tenth, 
NIP, honestly, obviously this is a middle, you know, mid performance, whatever, but I think this is still going to be enough to make sure that they're in a safe spot. And we'll take a look at those stats in just a second. Face clan in 13th, Aurora in 14th, but you are going to have these games starting off again today. These guys actually have another set of games uh, back to back this weekend. So the EMEA region will be playing uh, in just literally a couple of hours, 1 p.m. Eastern time. If you guys are trying to watch that's group B versus C. So you, even though NIP is technically not on the threshold right now, doesn't really matter because you're going to have two sets of games for them to play in, right? They still have to play their last group play match. And then also you're going to see them play in the regional finals as well. So Aurora also, you know, yeah, they didn't get the performance they were looking for. It wasn't as good as they co probably could have been, but it's not the end of the world. These guys still have a chance. Now on the flip side, you got some of these teams like right eternal. They did good and they got a, you know, a good bit of points, but they might actually miss out on regional finals. If some of these teams down here only with five games, they actually might be able to pass them and knock them out of that top 20. And so, uh, yeah, it's an unfortunate situation. But at the end of the day, I, I think that, you know, your big name teams will probably fare off just fine. Now, what you really got to worry about is relegation. I think some of these teams, sadly, will be missing out uh, and be regulated from Pro League or relegated from Pro League. And uh, they're not going to be able to play in the next one and have to requalify. And that's always a very strange one. Now, let's take a look at North America. This is where things get nice and spicy. We've been talking about two specific teams over the last couple of days. That's been Disguise. That's been Elevate. Did they get the days that they absolutely needed? The answer is kind of. So, Furia does win the night in first place. Pioneers in second. SSG in third. Disguised got fourth place a much needed you know day but i kind of feel like they need it as low as they were they kind of needed like a first to be honest with you maybe a second fourth is still pro probably sustainable because they're going to play again today if they can get like a first off of that they may get top 20 that might send them to the regional finals if they can win that they might get in that top 12 obviously time will tell but elevate in fifth place they needed a solid day and that was a pretty solid day falcons in six flat in seventh cloud nine and eight Yup in 9th, Liquid in 10th, Native in 11th, Vanity in 12th, Stallions in 13th, 14th was most hated, Oxygen Esports in 15th, NRG, Oblivion, Temper, Weave, and CCE all having their games come to an end and honestly not in the fashion they probably expected or wanted. Now, let's take a look at the overall stats as it stands right now. Of course, Falcon still in 1st, SSG in 2nd, Furia in 3rd, Liquid in 4th, LG in 5th, TSM in 6th, Pioneers in 7th, Bleed in 8th, NRG in 9th, Complexity in and cloud nine and elevate are in the top 12 now e8 does have all six games played so it may look nice right now but don't worry things will change because you do have teams down here with only five games that are going to play today that will make them be passed however they should should have done enough for top 20 still so when you go into top 20 then obviously they should have a chance to go crazy in regional finals to make sure they get a top 12 spot same thing with not moist they are currently sitting on 21st place right now they need to just get into the top 20 today so that they can go into regional finals but obviously if they're really striving to make land you just simply need a big day today not moist needs to win they've been doing good in scrims over the last couple of days they've been getting top three they've been winning scrim sets we need that moist today and if we don't get that moist today they may be on the brink of not qualifying for land on the flip side side disguise not only needs a good day today because they are on the brink of being rele relegated from pro league design might not make it back into pro league if they don't get their crap together today now they did make a big jump they were in 15 15 points here they've gone from 30th to 28th so they made a big jump point wise but they did not make a jump a big jump uh, as far as you know i guess placement wise so if they can get another big day today let's just say you know 20 let's just say they get like second place 21 points 20 points whatever somewhere in that range they'll jump up to 51 and it's very likely obviously you know they'll be looking up here somewhere in the top you know 15 and i think obviously if they get into regional finals they may just very well do enough to get into land but they're gonna have to go back to back big days here in order to make that happen so all these teams with a five next to their name, Stallions, Empire, Disguise, Vanity, EC, Not Moist. All these guys are going to be playing again today. Those with six are stuck and more than likely done. And that's kind of CCE here as well. They're probably not going to make regional finals. They're probably going to be relegated from Pro League as well if things don't go their way. Now, also some crazy statistics to talk about. Well, I guess you also should mention, uh, you know, some of these teams down here, I, I guess I didn't go over it, but Virtus Pro obviously going to be relegated from Pro League. That was a big shocker. And then APAC North also, you're going to have some of these teams like uh, uh, you reject the old reject, right? The crazy raccoon now reject is going to be relegated from pro league as well. They're, they're in a sticky spot. So 
really unfortunate stuff for some of these teams but let's take a look and see how apac north had some crazy stats come out after the fact these are actually insane this is actually insane even for apac north for crypto take a look at the pick rates that you had for apac north bangalore was in first but crypto was second. this is not a north american thing right you've been seeing bangalore you've been seeing bloodhound you've been seeing callus and fuse and you've been seeing all these other you know new new legend picks i guess since the since the update right a lot of pathfinder but take a look at apac north they are really utilizing crypto in a, a very nice spot here for him as well watson in third pathfinder in fourth catalyst in fifth bloodhound in sixth so there's your apac north chances and i really would like to see some more crypto in the algs and also a nice statistic to follow as well was the fact that you have only a very few select people that have made every single land of it in the game and those numbers are dwindling as time progresses so aspect had put this out over on the competitive apex reddit thread saying at the end of year three there were only seven people only seven to have made every single major algs land x games poland and year two and three uh you know five lands drop frex how reps sweet kashira and post kill year four split one playoffs roll around and team uh portugal and optic gaming failed to make land knocking off dropped kashira and post kill and now esports world cup rolls around and oxygen placing fourth in the qualifiers and frex is departing from ssg so he's going to be missing out of ewc while frex is missing out on ewc he has technically made every algs land leaving four however how reps and sweet are the only three to have made every single competitive apex land period and two of them you know practically guaranteed split two uh so this is going to be very interesting stuff here and obviously he's talking about uh you know how and sweet are practically guaranteed here for split two but i think tsm will fare off just fine as well when you take a look at the stats they are in sixth and they're kind of tied with lg so i don't know really how, how would you say that one's guaranteed not the other they're both kind of there right i think all three of them are honestly going to be uh, guaranteed how reps and sweet but this is a very interesting statistic now i don't think this is this is not really including the asia festival stuff because that just wasn't very serious like it, it just had one of those moments where it was more uh, uh you know asia invited teams plus alliance and tsm it wasn't really like all these guys had the equal opportunity i guess to get up there so very interesting stuff to say the least crazy stuff going on inside of the algs scene right now don't forget we have got big days today of more games to be played this is group b versus group c so disguised and co gotta run it back they gotta have another big day same stuff for nip right nip should be fine for the emea scene but uh, alliance obviously looking to take that number one spot they have the chance to do that today gaming gladiators have the chance to do that today passion ua have the chance danish as well nip these guys all need a solid day to make sure they stay inside the top 20 now here on the bottom side you've got teams like vex they need a big day players they need a big day out anc outplay nine lies they need big days to get into that top 20 and make regional finals and honestly nine lies are a group of players that are, are known right and chrono is the team manager for that for those guys so i think that they really are hoping for a big day especially knowing who in the weight that their name holds in the community so let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comment section below who were the big surprise shockers here i guess i didn't have the graph on that but like who are the big surprise shockers here that you guys saw for this uh, regional finals for APAC North, regional finals for APAC South, and who are you rooting for for the last day of Pro League for EMEA and North American scenes? Did it, this all in one take, by the way. Kind of shocked, but let me know down below. Like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all things inside the world. LGS News or Apex Esports in general. Until the next time, we'll see you all. Later, Gators.